In Excel, it's very common to highlight certain rows and you might want to find out how many you've highlighted or what the total sum of these values is. Unfortunately, Excel doesn't have a built-in way to do that. So let me show you three ways you can solve this from a very easy filter trick all the way to building a custom formula that lets you sum and count based on a cell's color. Going over the first method, you can see over here we have a table with certain highlighted areas that we want to find out the sum for. So down over here, I'm just going to use the subtotal function, hit the tab key there, and you'll notice that we have a lot of different functions within it. In our case, we're just looking for the sum of the values in yellow, so we'll choose number 9 here. Press the comma key, and the reference is simply that whole range, so it's going to be this whole sales values. Hit enter there, and we have that sum. All good until there, but now we need to create some kind of filter. So for this, we can either go to the right hand side under filter and click on filter, or the shortcut there is control shift L. Now that we have this drop down, we want to click inside of it and under filter by color, we can see the yellow color. So let's click on that. And you'll notice we now have the sum of the sales that are highlighted in yellow. And you can download this Excel file for free in the video description to follow along. At this point, you might be wondering why use the subtotal function? What about just using the sum function? Isn't that an easier method? Well, we can select all of the values here that are in yellow as we've used the filter and hit enter, but you'll notice we don't get the same answer. And the reason for this is that the sum function accounts for all of these hidden values. So you can see between row four and seven, we would obviously have row five and six. So it seems like it's accounting for those, hence why we need to use the subtotal function instead. In this example, we've just done it with one color being yellow, but this can also be done with multiple colors. You can see right here we have some rows in yellow and other ones in green. I've made the same subtotal function down below, and all we need to do now is press Ctrl Shift L to activate the filter. When we do in this drop down under filter by color, we don't only have the choice of yellow, but we also have the choice of green, and the subtotal function will adapt to that too. We've just looked at the sum, but because we're using the subtotal function, we've actually got a lot of other options too. So instead of choosing this 9, we can go for the number 2, that's gonna give us the count, we could go for the average, and all of these other functions too. For the count, it gives us 3, so that's looking correct. In theory, this method looks great, but it does have some limitations, and the main one is that you can actually see all of your data at once, especially when you filter, you no longer see there's some yellow values too, and some plain white ones. Also, we can't see the result all at the same time. We can only see it for green now. We need to filter again and then go to the yellow to find out what the yellow number is. That's why I want to show you a second method where you can see the breakdown simultaneously. On the right hand side, you can see that we have this table where we're hoping to find for these two colors, the sum and the count. So for this, we first want to head over to the cell right here under E3 and then head to formulas and look for the name manager, which we'll click on and press on new. Now within this area, we can call this something like the color. That's going to be the name of it. And down below under the refers to part is what we'll type in a formula, which is the get dot cell formula. And in parentheses here, we'll choose the number 38 comma. And the cell that we want the value from is the D3. So let's put the 3 in here and close those parentheses. Basically that 38 is telling Excel to extract just the background color from the cell. Press on OK here and close out of that. So now we're ready to give this a try. We're just going to look for color. We should find it now that we've created this. Hit the tab key there and hit enter. The first one should be a 0 as the background is white. But as we move down, you'll notice that all of those that are in yellow are number 6. All of those in green are number 42. With that information, we can then create some kind of a formula like a sum if that says out of this range over here, press the F4 key to lock that, comma. The criteria should be that if it's number 6, comma, then we should get the sum of the sales values that are corresponding. Press the F4 key there to lock that as well and hit enter. So we've got 53,000 in the sum. I can then drag this down to the green area and all we need to do is change it from number 6 to number 42 as that's the highlight color for green. For the count, it's slightly different, but before I show you that, if you're looking to boost your Excel productivity, I'd recommend you check out HubSpot's 
50 Excel Hacks Guided Template. By clicking on the link in the description below, you can download this resource completely for free. The download includes all 50 Excel hacks with instructions on how to read them and sample data to practice with. The hacks are split into three different types and the website even provides a short demo video for each one. Personally, I find this Excel template most useful to refresh my memory on some of the best hacks in Excel, especially as I can practice with the sample data they provide. So I recommend visiting the link in the description below to download this 50 Excel Hacks guided template from HubSpot to level up your Excel game. And thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Now that we've completed the sum area, let's go over the count which is slightly different because it's the count if function instead. The range is all of this part right here. Press the F4 key to lock that comma and the criteria is that this part is equals to a six. Close up parenthesis and hit enter. We have five occurrences of the yellow. Let's drag this down to the green part. And for this one, we need to change from a six to a number 42 for the green color. Hit enter there and we only have three occurrences there. For the second method to work, we do need the helper column, but we can easily hide this just by right clicking on it and pressing on hide. This is gonna work in the same way. Or alternatively, we can change the background color. So go to the home and just match that font color to the background like this so it looks like there's nothing there. So far, we've been looking at the background fill color, but what if we wanted to identify the font color instead? Well, for that, we can head back under formulas and press on the name manager again, and this time we're just gonna edit this part. So remember we did the 38 to extract just the background color, we can change the number to a 24, and now this is going to focus on the font color, so in this case they should all be the same as they're all just a plain black font. Let's press on close, and you'll notice here we only have ones, which seems about right as all of these values are black. As you've seen, the second method does require quite a lot of different steps, first using the name manager, setting up this formula, and then using a separate formula for the sum part, as well as for the count part. That's why I want to show you the third solution, and in my opinion, this is the best one. The idea is to build a custom formula like this that allows you to simply select a range, select the color you're looking for, and we get the result. The best part is you set this up once and you never have to touch it again. All we need to do here is head over to the developer tab, which if you can't find, just go to any other tab, right click, and press on customize the ribbon. Within this right hand side, you should find the developer, so make sure you tick on that and then press on OK. Now you should be able to see it and we'll head over to this part called Visual Basic. Within this section, I know it looks a bit intimidating, but you don't need to know much. You just need to head over to Insert and press on Module. Now all you need to do is paste the code in here. You can obviously just copy this code manually or I've actually provided the Excel file for free in the video description if you just want to copy and paste it from there. Basically, we've got two main areas split by this line. The first one is gonna count the color, so it's a function we're creating to count the occurrences of a certain color. And secondly, the sum color is going to count the sum of the values within those colors. Now, all we need to do is close out of this and you don't actually need to understand much of what's going on here. We'll simply close that and in here, let's go ahead and try out this first function, which is the sum color. You'll notice it's a function because it's got that effects in it. Hit the tab key there and the array are all of these values over here. We'll press the F4 key, comma, and now if it's a certain color, in this case if it's a yellow color, which I have right behind the cell, then that's the one that we want it to be summed. So we've got the sum for that one and I can drag this down and it moves dynamically to this lower part too. With the count, we just need to do something similar with the count color function that we just created. And so we want to select that same area, press the F4 key to lock that, comma, and whenever it's this yellow part, that's when we want it to be counting. So we've got a count of five in here and we can double click, this one's three, so that's looking correct. Unfortunately, both this second and the third method don't actually update automatically. In fact, if we take a look over here and let's suppose that I want to change this value to a yellow color, I can obviously do that right here. But when I do, you'll notice that these values don't update on their own. In fact, I need to hit enter on each one of these to be able to update them. So all of these have to be entered again, which isn't ideal. Let's try to create some kind of a refresh button with a macro. 
For this, we just need to go over to the developer area again, and under Visual Basic, we're gonna edit part of this code. I can just delete this part and paste this new one where some of the key changes are that we're using this application volatile, which is basically telling it to recalculate these functions. And then down below, we're creating the macro for it right here. This one's also provided in the Excel file in the video description. Now we can just close out of this and we can try to add a button. For that, we just want to go to insert here under the developer and choose a button. Let's say I just put it over here to the side. We want to assign it to this new macro we've created called refresh color functions. Press on OK and we've got it right here. Now, if I just go ahead and change these values, let's say I create some more yellow ones over here and I press on this button number one, you notice that our values get updated. Same thing with the green. Let's say I change these over to green colors. Yeah, I think we were using this green right here. Now press on button one again, and all these values update too. Awesome, now we don't need any more name managers or complex functions either. The one final step we need to do is to save this file as a macro enabled workbook, just by going to file save us, or pressing on the F12 key. Instead of a normal Excel workbook, we're gonna choose on a macro enabled workbook, so the second one, and press on save. You've just seen the power of using Visual Basic in Excel, and if you want to learn how to use this and you've never done it before, you should watch this video over here to learn VBA, or you can take our VBA and macros course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.